How do psychiatric drugs really work? There are answers to that question. I'm Peter Bregan, I'm a psychiatrist, and this is presentation number two in my series on simple truths about psychiatry. In my first presentation, I talked about biochemical imbalances and how psychiatric drugs actually create them and disrupt brain function. How does this get mistaken for an improvement? Well, if you look at your head, in profile maybe, you'll see that it's not flat like the heads of apes. It's not flat like my dog's head. It's got a big bulge. That's your frontal lobes. Your frontal lobes are the highest evolutionary flower of human existence. It's what makes us what we call human beings. It's the seat of civilization. It's what's required for us to feel like we are persons and identities. And above all else, it's for our social relationships. Because that wonderful brain of yours and mine and everyone else's developed before we had the internet. It developed before we had tools. It probably developed before we were writing on walls because it developed about 100,000 years ago. That's before towns and cities. So what did it develop for? Developed for our social relationships. And our social relationships are so complicated and subtle and marvelous and at times destructive as human beings that it took all of our brains to become who we are as persons, social beings. Every single psychoactive substance disrupts that function. There's no drug to put in there and make it better. They all disrupt that function. So why do we think that they're helping? If you drink a couple of beers at night and it relaxes you, maybe helps you sleep for a few hours, what's going on? Your brain is being sedated. It's being shut down. It's being slowed down. That's not an improvement in function. It's actually a harmful dysfunction. For example, if you all of a sudden had to do something important, if I'm a psychiatrist, as I am, and I'm going to answer the phone, and I have a distressed patient, do I want to have two beers under the belt? Of course not. I need my frontal lobes functioning. And I hope my patient's frontal lobes are functioning, which is, by the way, why I don't start people on psychiatric drugs. Any psychoactive substance, alcohol, marijuana, any psychiatric substance, marijuana, alcohol, Prozac, Abilify, Lithium, Ritalin, Adderall, it doesn't matter what the substance is. It's impairing that function. Well, why does it seem like it's helping? We already saw that it might seem like it's helping if you want less function at night and you just want to have yourself pressured to go to sleep. It's an abnormal state pushed into sleep by a sedative. Well, basically, all psychiatric drugs take the edge off your frontal lobe function, off of your caring, your thinking, your feeling. And that's the primary effect that most of them have that people seek. We have less pain. It's an anesthesia of the brain, and hence the spirit or soul. All psychoactive substances tend to do that. They do that somewhat different ways, but that's what they do. They suppress or disable brain function. In my books and articles, I call that the brain disabling principles of psychiatric treatment the brain disabling principle of psychiatric treatment. Well, I've talked about sedation. If you take a benzodiazepine like Xanax or Clonopin or Cirax or Ativan, it's having an alcohol-like effect. It, in fact, is jacking up a system called GABA, which is an overall suppressant system in the brain. And if you took enough of a benzo, you could actually undergo anesthesia without anything else. Most anesthetics are related to the benzos. All right, that will reduce your anxiety for a time, but it's not actually specifically affecting your anxiety. 
it's suppressing your higher brain functions, of which anxiety is one. It's also going to be suppressing some of your cognitive function, some of your memory function, your overall brain function. Let's say you're taking, and I hope you're not, Abilify or Seroquel or Risperdal or Zyprexa, one of the so-called antipsychotic drugs. Well, there's nothing antipsychotic about them. We don't know how to pluck psychosis out of the brain. These drugs block a specific neuronal pathway. They block dopamine, which is the main pathway to guess where? Your frontal lobes. So you're getting a chemical lobotomy when you take these drugs. And that produces probably most impactfully apathy, indifference, not caring, not being involved with yourself. So patients who are hearing hallucinations, they don't go away when they take one of these drugs. They just don't care so much about them. But that same poor soul isn't caring as much about his wife or his children or her husband or even rooting for the ball team or religion or the outdoors or anything. It's a generalized apathy and indifference. The same thing produced by surgical lobotomy, which cuts the same pathways. Now what about Ritalin and, and the drugs we use, uh, the stimulants that we use to treat kids for ADHD? We'll talk about ADHD and whether it exists at another time. But we know exactly how these stimulants work because there are lots of animal studies showing that stimulant drugs cause animals to, again, be crushed in their spontaneous behavior. You can actually measure in an animal that, like a chimpanzee, it won't explore as much, it won't run around as much, it won't groom as much, it won't hug as much, it won't kiss as much, it won't fight as much, because there's a suppression of spontaneous behavior. And because of an effect on the basal ganglia, there's an increase in compulsive behavior. So there's an increase in compulsive behavior. Well, if you take this animal and put him in a cage, he looks like a much happier animal because he's not trying to escape, he's not trying to do anything, and he's doing compulsive stuff like chew on the bars or pick on his skin. That's what we do with our children in our classrooms. We turn them into good caged animals by giving them a drug that disables their brain by suppressing, suppressing spontaneous behavior and causing obsessive behavior so they might copy real hard from the board, but they're not learning anything more. It's going to be a, a, a special simple truth about psychiatry to talk more about stimulant drugs and ADHD. But what I want to leave you with now is that if you're getting an effect from a psychiatric drug, it's a disabling effect. It may have even started with euphoria because that's another thing that can happen when you hurt the brain. You can get apathy and indifference, you can get sedation, but you can get a temporary high. And many patients who just continue for their lives searching for that high again to feel better than ever on a psychiatric drug. That's usually the newer antidepressants, the SSRIs, like Prozac and Selexa and Zoloft and so on. And in fact, if a patient goes into a doctor's office and says, I feeling better than I ever had these first couple of weeks on Prozac, the best I've ever had. That's not a good sign. I mean, think about it. Is that good that you've taken a drug and now you're reporting you feel better than ever than your whole life? You're not saying, I'm closer to my wife and children or my husband. I've been more creative. I've finally you know, dealing with work in a, in a more responsible fashion. I've given up drinking. I've really taken responsibility for my life. No, you're saying, I'm feeling better for the first time in my life due to the drug. It's actually a very bad sign. It often is the first stages of mania, which is frequently caused by these psychiatric drugs. So don't be fooled. As I said in Simple Truths About Psychiatry number one, drugs aren't correcting a biochemical imbalance. And now, really want to let you know, they only work by making you less than you really 